States, the United States Army and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved ones honorable and faithful service. Yes, Thank you, good job. I advise.
am an American soldier. I dedicated part of my life to the United States of America, just as most of you have done. And you served honorably. Most of us have a family or have reattached ourselves to a family or have made the adjustment back to civil uh, life. Many of our brothers that we enlisted with and served with somehow missed that part of life and wound up without a family or without a family that cares or have just outlived their families. <coughs> Others have been lucky enough to find friends who act like family, which is what we have today with Mr. Spoda. We know they're honorable men and women because they served this country and they received an honorable discharge or else they would not be allowed to be buried here in this cemetery with all the other heroes that are laying here. So we salute them today, the ones here, the ones that will be here, and the one, others across the nation that will be buried today and during the next week at a national cemetery. And we pray for those who once again are being sent into harm's way. It's the usual story, the special forces are going in in small numbers. Uh, this time they think 250 will be able to kick their ass, but I don't know, might, might be a few more. But uh, as usual, whenever the special forces go in, the army and the others come in after that. So these guys going over now have a special mission. Remember them at all times. Keep them in your prayers. Their mission is not something that you would probably want to do, but it's something that has to be done. So stand by and honor them. Mr. Hudson is not here today, so I will have to do a double job. The veterans being honored by the National Guard are ones that we have previously honored as burials from Los Angeles, but we will read their names again. Robert McConnell, United States Navy. Gary Gepner, United States Navy. Larry Oxner, United States Coast Guard. The veterans coming out today for burial from the Los Angeles Coroner's Office are William Porter, <coughs> age 79, uh, no history available yet <coughs> for him. Uh, Jimmy Smith, age 71, United States Army, Vietnam. Charles Sponder, age 84, United States Army, Cold War. Frederick Tucker, age 81, no history on him as a, at this time honorably served. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Once again, I want to welcome you here and thank you for being here. I am deeply honored to be here one, one more time. 
Run for the Wall is coming up. Just a few facts on that. Some of you that are doing the Run for the Wall might, might want to remember some of these and think about them. There are 58,260 some names on the wall, including the ones recently added. The names are arranged in order in which they were taken from us by date. Within each date, the names are alphabetized. It's hard to believe it's 60 years since the first known casualty. First known casualty was Richard B. Fitzgibbon of North Wayman, Massachusetts, listed in the Department of Defense as having been killed on June 8, 1956. His name is listed on the wall with that of his son, Marine Corporal Lance Corporal Richard B. Fitzgibbon III, who was killed on September 7, 1965. There are three sets of fathers and sons on the wall. 39,996 were just 22 years or younger. 8,283 were 19. The largest group, 33,103, were 18. 12 soldiers were 17. Five soldiers were 16. One soldier on the wall, PFC Dan Bullock, was 15 years old. Nine hundred and ninety seven were killed on their first day in Vietnam. One thousand four hundred and forty eight were killed on their last scheduled day in Vietnam. Thirty one sets of sets of brothers are on the wall. Fifty four soldiers attended Thomas and Edison High School in Philadelphia. You have to wonder why how so many from one school. 244 soldiers were awarded the Medal of Honor during the Vietnam War. 153 of them are on the wall. Beesville, Ohio, population of 475 lost six of their sons. The most casualties on a single day was on January 31st, 1968, 245 deaths. The most casualties in a single month was May 1968. 2,415 soldiers, casualties were incurred. For most soldiers, these are just numbers on the wall. To those of us who survived the war and the families who did not, we see their faces, we feel the pain of these numbers created. We are, until we pass away, haunted by these numbers. Take off your hats for a brief prayer, please. I said, God, I hurt, and God said, I know. I said, God, I cry out a lot, and God said, that is why I give you tears. I said, life is so hard, and God said, that's why I gave you loved ones. I said, but my loved one died, and God said, so did mine. I said, it's such a great loss, and God said, I saw mine nailed to a cross. I said, but your loved one lives, and God said, so does yours. I said, where is he now? And God said, my son is beside me, and your son is in my arms. Dear God, please bless all here. Please guide them safely home. Please bless all of our troops still fighting for us everywhere in the world, as well as our first responders protecting us here in the United States. God bless you all. God bless the United States of America. Amen. 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 I'm always reminded of what Tony Blair said, the Prime Minister of England in front of Parliament. He was addressing Parliament and he says, there have been two forces in the history of this world that have stepped forward and volunteered their life for humanity. Christ for your sins, and the United States soldier for your freedom. Anytime 911 goes up anywhere in the world, our troops are ready to go. You gotta remember, it's an all enlisted service. There's no, no draftees in there right now. So they are ready to go. They enlisted because they knew something could happen. 
if we cannot do him honor while he's here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his days. Perhaps just a simple headline in a paper that would say, our country is in mourning, a soldier died today. Amen. Thank you all for Amen. being here. Remember our vets today, whatever you can do to help them. We're still in an ungodly number of 22 vets a day committing suicide. We can't have this. We need to let them know we're reaching out to them or at least let them know that we are here for them should they want us. You, you guys have been through it. Some of you struggled to get through it. Reach out to these guys and show them you can make it past and there is a life. And what they did was not horrific. To us in the United States, it's, it's horrific to us. But what you do in wartime is not. And what the, some of these people in other countries have to live under is one of the worst conditions that you could ever think about. So help the, any troop, any veteran who needs the help. Thank you all.